Hey everyone, welcome to our small footprint. Uh, today is a mix of things in the video. I have a kitchen day, so a friend was feeling unwell, potentially having COVID, so I decided to do some baking that I could send to her, as well as, you know, it's always good to have an excuse to do some baking. So I did some baking, we cooked a really luscious dinner with a risotto and an ossobuco stew type thing so i've got all that to share with you uh made some lemon cordial and things like that but we also got the one part of the chicken pens finished because i had thought i was picking up the new hens yesterday but it i got it wrong <laughs> so i thought it was the 3rd of august it's actually the 13th so we don't have them yet but we do have one pen finished so i'm going to show you that in a minute we do have um all the materials to do the rest of them so we're going to get them done as well but we wanted to have at least one pen finished so that we could put the new hens straight into one of the new pens uh so i'm going to show that uh so come along see us in the progress of finishing this pen it looks so much better now that we've got the bracing in and everything else it looks so much finished and i and also with our cooking for the day thanks for watching guys oh also uh nicole bought a thermomix yesterday thank you very very much nicole that was my first ever sale and it was very exciting and i thoroughly look forward to doing a one-on-one -on -one zoom with her to uh for when she unboxes it and the i love the sharing the excitement i i really adore my thermomix which is the only reason why i decided to sign up so that's one down five to go in the next 60 days to pay off my thermix so if anyone's interested please give me a bell because i'd love to help you out and it would help me out as well so i will see you again in the next day or so and enjoy the rest of the video thanks guys So this is where we're at with the chicken men. I'm going to put a piece of wood across the top there to pin that netting down above the gate and to make it look nice. Uh, so we've left a fair bit of slack in the uh, netting that's all the way over. So we weren't going to put a solid roof because it would require too much uh, wood and too much uh, cost to do it uh, but we also have all these trees in here and we didn't want to cut the trees down so what we've done is what we did with the last pen and we've used this bird netting uh, it's a 10 by 10 piece and we're going to have to use one for each um, pen uh, and we've left a whole lot of slack in a whole lot of different places so that as these trees grow we can let it <laughs> rise up so we've got all this extra slack here so what we're going to do is we're using some cable ties to make it just cure it up so that it's and they're reusable cable ties so they're undoable and we put all this slack together to make sure that there's no risk to any of the birds but the the fencing is quite high too so realistically the birds probably wouldn't hit the net anyway except that they might fly up into some of these trees uh, it's more to protect them because we have hawks and stuff that will 
fly in, but also we get those little pigeons and doves that will come in and steal the food, which isn't that big a deal generally, but at the same time, they might carry stuff that's going to affect the, the animals. So we always cover our chicken pens after we've had problems with the, had problems with them previously. So this is what we do. Not necessarily what a lot of people would choose to do but this is how we do it and it has worked for the last four years and we've never had an injured bird so so long as we make it tall enough we pick up all the slack and things like that it works so it looks wonderful now we've got all this wood bracing so we put wood on either side of the metal here so we have wood here that's attached to the metal so that this Avery mesh is pinned on that side and then on the outside to pin it on the outside as well and stapled all the Avery mesh and the netting to it and we go all the way around so that it's all secure with all the Avery mesh everywhere. So that was that's one pen done and we've got two more to finish. So because the friend wasn't feeling well, she was after some sweet treats. So that's what we did today. Uh, we did a bit of a baking day using up some of the modes on the Thermix that I haven't been able to use in a long time and enjoying the fact that I could get multiple tasks done, which is really what I was after. So uh, I made, first thing I made was some shoe pastry to make some profiteroles. So profiterole dough that shoe pastry is really simple. You just have to, it's just another one of those things that you have to stir a lot and it takes time that could be used for doing other things. So uh, the first part of making shoe dough is, shoe, <laughs> shoe dough is to uh, heat up the fats and the water and things like that. So everything I'm making today either uses ghee or coconut oil and coconut cream. It's all dairy free in a sense that ghee for us is fine. It's not fine for everyone who does dairy free though. But so it's the water and the fats and that that get heated up initially in the thermix. So I put that to go. I unpacked my citrus juicer. So Daryl went to Kmart the other day to get Surreal a new keyboard and we got some new uh, colored pencils and stuff for the kids for the schooling. And they have a citrus juicer really cheap. I've got all these lemons to do the lemon cordial with and I haven't had a chance to do them yet. And it is really hard on my hands juicing them. So I found this cheap one at Kmart. If it works really well, then I'm going to keep on using it. If it dies on me, I might upgrade to a more expensive one. But for the moment, this will do what I need it to do. So I unboxed that and got it out so that I could use it for the lemons. Uh, for whatever I decided to do with the lemons today, I will probably end up freezing a lot of this lemon juice in ice cube trays. So I need to juice it for that benefit. Uh, once the thermix chimed at me, I had to add the flour to the liquid so you just add the flour in and it does another bit of a knead cycle uh, to create that initial dough uh, once it's created that initial dough you have to put it aside because the next thing you're going to be doing is adding eggs to it so it has to be at a temperature that isn't going to uh, scramble those eggs as they're added so I took it off the base and put it aside to let it cool down for 10 minutes before adding the eggs while that was cooling, I started with my lemons. So I peel all the lemons and I use just a standard plastic, you know, the really cheap peelers. I find them the, the best. I find them the quickest, the easiest. Maybe it's because what I grew up with, but especially for lemons, they take off the skin without with very little pith. So I use them. I do have a zester, but it's a lot more hard work. And realistically, if I freeze or dry the pieces larger I can just use the thermix to grind them so I don't really need them in those tiny little pieces so I peeled all the lemons as I was going and then cut them in half to juice them I went to plug the juicer in the cord didn't reach for that bench so I haven't got that on camera I've got it around the corner but it worked quite well it uh, it has lots of things in the in the instruction booklet about only using it for 30 seconds and giving it five minute cool downs and things like that so I tried to not push it too hard and we will see how it goes in the long run uh, after that the dough was cool enough to use so I put the bowl back on the thermix and then you turn it on so it's mix so it's spinning and kneading and you just add the eggs one at a time so this is one of those aspects where I would really struggle with stirring the dough and adding the eggs my hands and my shoulders I, I do it but it's it's quite painful and it can cause quite a lot of issues over the next couple of days if I do anything too hard with my hands and my wrists so uh, you add the eggs one at a time while it 
kneads it into the dough and you don't have to do anything else. Just stand there and crack the eggs and pour them in. Once the dough is done, it looks like this. It's a very uh, wet sort of a dough. You normally pipe this. So you'd normally make uh, eclairs or profiteroles or anything like that with the shoe pastry. And you normally pipe it into the shape that you want to use because then you fill it. Uh, I don't have a piping. I have a couple of really cheap piping things that I use for the kids for... Um, like Christmas cookies and things like that but I don't have anything decent so I wasn't going to go to the effort of that so all I did was I used wet hands so I just used a bowl with some water in it so that I could dip my hands in it and pulled out balls and shaped them into somewhat of a ball and then uh, placed them on the tray so I managed to stretch this out to 12 for this batch of dough uh, once that was done, they went into the barbecue to cook. So I'm still using the barbecue for cooking at the moment. The oven, I've just given up. Uh, but I seem to have got pretty good at judging where it needs to go within the space of the oven cavity and what temperatures or like which burners need to go where to hit temperatures and things like that. It's going to be difficult in summer because the outside temperature is so hot that getting low temperatures in there might be difficult. But we'll, we will deal when we deal. While they were in the oven, I decided to make the espresso caramel sauce. So I got a cookie do subscription. You get a free cookie do subscription with your Thermix and then you can continue it on if you wish. Uh, the cookie do is what you can bring up on the screen of the Thermix and it's got an app for your phone. And it's also got a, a page on the, like a, a website where you can search all different recipes around the world that are on cookie do. You can add them to meal plans, you can add them to lists and you can even pull the ingredients out and send them directly to Woolworths as a shopping list, which is just amazing. Not something I could use, but I think that way back when that would have been awesome. So this espresso caramel sauce has been featured on the front page every time I've opened up Cookie Doo, and it sounded really nice. So I decided to give it a go. Again, it's a mixing one. So it's something that I can put on and walk away. So you add all your caramel ingredients in first, or your toffee sort of ingredients without the cream in first and you set it to go and it cooks it into the caramel like you would on a stovetop when you're cooking a caramel sauce you get it to a certain softball caramel kind of a stage before you add your cream to it so it cooked it to the caramel stage and then it chimes at you and you open it up and you add your cream for me this is coconut cream and then turn it back on and it reduces it for you uh, to more of a thicker caramel uh, we have tried this uh, it was okay uh, it has a very much like a burnt caramel flavor. Uh, it's not it's not burnt, just that burnt caramel flavor. So it's not like it's inedible, but I don't know. It's not really my favorite, but uh, it was fun to make and try. So that was the main thing. Once it was all cooked up and that, we poured it into the jars. Quite thin when it went into the jars, but it did set up. You have to remember too that I'm not using butter or uh, dairy cream in anything that I'm making so the texture of things may not be quite correct because I'm following the cookie dough recipes for these and I like if I was to make it again I might reduce something or change something slightly to uh, cater for the fact that I went dairy free but for the moment I was just following the recipes to see how it works because that's sort of what you have to do you have to follow a standard recipe and then tweak it from that point forward so I poured it into jars to put it in the fridge to thicken up. Uh, the new Thermix also has like this recipe at the end of the recipe on the cookie do. It tells you to do a self clean. I haven't used a self clean before, but it makes sense because it's toffee and that's really hard to get out of anything like saucepans or bowls or whatever. So uh, it was a liter of water and some vinegar and you press self clean and it seemed to heat the water and mix it up and clean the bottom of the bowl. And that was pretty neat because it's never fun to clean those bowls after making toffee. So I put it through that. After that, I had to make the creme anglaise for the uh, inside the profiteroles. So I'm just making, you know, like a, a thick custard, basically. Creme anglaise is, a, is basically a, a thick custard uh, that you serve cold inside the profiteroles. Uh, normally you would pipe them into the middle uh, through a hole in the bottom. But again, I wasn't pulling piping stuff out, so but that's fine. So I, again, the creme anglaise is made uh, dairy-free, so uh, it... I used coconut cream and all that sort of thing with it. And you, you basically just throw everything in. It's a custard. And the way the Thermomix works with custards is unreal because you basically just throw everything in, turn it on, and it senses when it's thick enough and it's done. So I threw everything in for there. I used my homemade vanilla. So this was a really lovely, bright vanilla flavor. Uh, I need to top up my 
vanilla actually I got Daryl to buy me some vodka yesterday so that I could put the last of my beans in a new batch of vanilla uh, but vanilla bean paste would have been better but I don't have any made up at the moment so I used just the liquid van vanilla um, and put that in there and cooked it this is what the profiteroles look like cooked they turned out perfectly so this recipe worked really well for me using dairy-free alternatives uh, and they've puffed up beautifully they're a little haphazard in shape wise because I hand shaped them rather than piped them but that's fine they they I don't mind I'm I'm all for rustic looking things so this is what they looked cooked and then once the custard was finished so I pulled them out and while the custard was finished you have to put it into something uh, that to chill and custards when you put them in a fridge if you don't put something directly on the surface of them they create a skin and that skin will peel off and you can eat it and whatever but it's a funny texture it's sort of rubbery and it's not the most pleasant thing in the world uh, so if you put a piece of cling wrap or a piece of silicon sheeting I just grabbed a piece of cling wrap I couldn't find any clean silicon uh, you could probably use beeswax wraps I didn't think about that but you probably could uh, and you place it on the surface so you want it touching all the top of the surface while it's in the fridge and that will stop it creating that skin because the cling wrap is the skin in the end so I did that and put it in the fridge to chill I had also put together but I didn't film it some more of the lemon curd cakes because I promised that I would send one over to my friend because she was the one who got me the lemons so I made two of the like a double batch of the cake mix I used a single batch of the curd because Daryl complained that it was a little bit too lemony and placed it in two small trays to put it in the barbecue the other thing I was doing with the lemons today was making uh, lemon cordial so I grabbed two different ratios off the internet two different recipes to have a look at because I haven't made straight lemon cordial before and decided to make them both and we'll try them both to see what works they were both very different ratios of water sugar to lemon juice so we'll give it a go they both had citric acid and tartaric acid in them so they were both perfectly fine for canning I just am gonna figure out which one has the flavor that we like the best um, so I made two pots up with the different sorts a bigger pot had the one with the higher ratio of water smaller pot with the lower ratio of water uh, added the uh, lemon juice and the sugar and the water the lemon peel stuck it on the stove let it simmer for 10 minutes and then put lids on it and let it steep for the rest of the day I also got started on dinner so part of the quarter of a cow that we ordered we had osobuco in the in cuts in it and I haven't cooked that before so I looked up some recipes and recipe tin had an osobuco recipe and recipe tin is always got some great recipes like I've made some really wonderful things from there so I thought I would just stick with that and it's basically just a stew so I decided to give it a go so I browned the meat first so I heated up my Dutch oven with a bit of oil in the bottom and browned all the pieces of meat so there was four pieces here which ended up being about 1.2 kilos uh, and I've got another bag of four pieces in the fridge so I can make this again at some point uh, I put so brown the meat off and then I added the onion celery garlic and carrot into the fat and oil so I just diced them all up and put them into the oil and cooked them off a little bit sweated them off a little bit so that it would pick up any brown off the bottom of the pot deglazing it a little bit uh, then I added the a couple of tins of tomatoes and a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste some chicken stock and some white wine vinegar this was supposed to have white wine in it Daryl hadn't got back from the shops yet and I needed to get this on so I didn't put any white wine in it just add a little bit of white wine vinegar to add a little bit of acid to it uh, and put that all into the pot and mixed it up really well uh, once I I also added some herbs so I added some thyme and a few bay leaves in there as well uh, a bit of salt and pepper I think as well and just flavor to taste so it's sort of a tomato based beef stew basically uh, with the osobuku in there so I once I got all the ingredients in there I added the meat back in and just pushed it under so that it was partially submerged and put the lid back on it and then let it simmer so it simmered for I actually had to move it off the camp chef because it doesn't go low enough on the camp chef and put it up on the burner that's not working very well on the top of the oven that worked really well because it's not working very well it's quite a low temperature so it simmered in the Dutch oven for four hours or something uh, if I make it again I'll probably start my wood fire up and I'll stick it inside the wood fire uh, on with just um, coals in there so then it can just cook in there and I won't be using gas to do it 
uh, while that was on I had to decant the cordial so Sonnet helped me there uh, and we decanted it into some old Posada jars now I'm lazy and I leave my labels on my Posada jars until they wash off uh, it only takes a couple of times canning them in the boiling water and they just sort of slide off so I do that because I'm lazy but you can obviously remove the labels off your reuse jars if that's what you choose to do uh, so we decanted all the cordial into the jars the two different types and put them aside the other thing we did other thing I did was with the the peels that I peeled off the ones that I hadn't used in the cordial I just stuck them into a couple of jars plenty of headroom and I'm gonna stick them in the freezer so they will be I will have lemon peel in the freezer to use for whatever I want when I can't get lemons cheap uh, I really enjoy having frozen cubes of lemon juice and lemon peel in the freezer I think it's wonderful to make lemon treats when you can't get lemons uh, the recipe tin recipe for the Osobuku had a couple of different things that you could serve it with one of the options was risotto Milanese now I've only made that risotto the other night with the Domex and everyone adored it because it's not something I had made often before uh, I thought it'd be nice filling meal because I wasn't sure how far the stew would go so I decided to make the Milanese from the cookie dough and Milanese is basically just a base risotto it has no proteins in it no veggies in it it's just onion white wine parmesan if you use it we didn't use parmesan a bit of butter things like that uh, I doubled the recipe I wasn't sure if I'd get away with it but the um, it had no proteins or vegetables in it so I thought I would so I doubled it all the ingredients and then the very last bit of liquid that I had to add I just filled it to the max line which was a little under the double the liquid but I was gonna get I was the guinea pig I decided to give it a go uh, and I cooked it for an extra four minutes for that as well. Uh, this is what the stew looked like when it was done. Uh, that all the meat has broken up we pulled all the bones out we shoved all the marrow out of the bones into the stew as well and uh, mixed all the meat through the veggies and uh, served you know had it all blended and then I served it with the risotto so I just put a scoop of risotto on the, on the plate and then served some stew over the top uh, five out of six kids really liked it we even had them going back for seconds uh, Karvik was not a fan but you know you can't win them all and not everyone loves everything I make then for dessert we had the profiteroles so I cut them open because as I said I wasn't going to pipe into them because I couldn't find a piping anything to use and I just couldn't be bothered washing it to be honest so I just sliced them in half and you can see they were perfect they had these big airy bubbles in the middle plenty of space for the custard so I filled them with the creme anglaise or the vanilla custard and then piled them up and drizzled the espresso caramel sauce over them and because you know I could I made it fancy and made them like a I'm gonna say a croquembouche 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 however it's pronounced one of those stacks of profiteroles with the toffee and stuff uh, on the plate because it looked pretty and I could take a photo of it and then we cut them in half and ate them for dessert so that was a very fancy treat for after a very fancy dinner it was a very fancy kind of a day so thank you very much for joining me again and I will see you again in the next day or so uh, with whatever I come up with next. Thanks guys.